low potassium in low carb linked to high BP and elevated uric acid. Ito isa sa mga common complications o common na mga side effect na nakikita ng mga ibang taong naglo-low carb nang sila-sila lang. Mostly not the guided way. Nakikita lang ng videos natin and sometimes invited by family and friends sa ating mga groups na inspire na mag-low carb. But then, bigla-bigla, nag-shoot up yung blood pressure at saka yung kanilang uric acid tumaas din. Alam nyo ba ano yung pinaka-common reason nito? It's actually the lack of electrolytes. Specifically, mababa masyado yung potassium sa katawan. Bakit bumababa yung potassium sa katawan when in fact, hindi naman nag yung inyong kinakain? This is because kapag naglo-low carb na kayo, your body's insulin is lowered. Kapag bumaba yung insulin sa katawan, yung ating tendency to retain water, to retain electrolytes ay bumababa din. And part of those is na-excrete yung potassium. Now, kapag yung potassium ay sobrang baba na sa katawan, yung ating heart nagko-compensate yan. It is highly excitable kasi nga yung potassium, ito yung nagbibigay sana ng intracellular na electrical charge sa ating cells. Pero kapag hindi na balanse yung potassium at saka yung sodium sa loob at labas ng cell, eto ay parating na excite kaya that's why maraming nagka cramps ang cramping is a sign of muscular contraction nagko-contract yung muscle ng sobra-sobra kahit hindi mo ginustong gamitin yung muscle na yon also in the middle of the night nagigising yung mga tao in the long run it can even lead into weakness or fatigue kaya yung mga bikers yung mga physically active, yung mga athletes, when they do low carb, sa simula, nangihina sila. And it is just relating to lack of electrolytes. So, kapag nangyayari yan, yung katawan natin, it will try to overcompensate. Lalakasan niya yung kanyang tibok ng puso o di kaya magkocontract yung mga blood vessels, which eventually, it will lead into high blood pressure. Kaya yung trend nito, when you start low carb, example, if meron kayong hypertension na to start with, nagsisimula na bumabagsak yung inyong blood pressure. Masayang masaya kayo because you see it lowering down. But then after two weeks, after three weeks, after a month, biglang nagsushoot up ulit. And it's not steady. Noon, parating mataas yung blood pressure. This time, tumataas yung blood pressure pero pabigla-bigla, it's spiking. And it is because of unstable na electrolyte sa katawan. Kapag yung electrolyte is unstable, yun, hindi sustained na low yung blood pressure kasi nga from time to time, nag-overcompensate yung puso natin. And how about uric acid? Uric acid is a byproduct of urine na metabolism. It is a kind of or sub kind of protein. At yung mga proteins na ito, kapag sumusobra nga, tumataas yung ating uric acid sa katawan. However, normally, normally hindi ito nag elevate because normally iniihi lang ito ng ating katawan. In fact, not everybody will have spike in uric acid, kakaunti lang. Meron talagang mga tao na prone to uric acid accumulation. And uric acid accumulation per se, kung tumataas lang yung uric acid mo, hindi naman siya ganang ka-damaging because when you read nga the text, the science behind hyperuricemia, nagiging nakakatakot lang yung hyperuricemia or yung pagtaas ng uric acid sa dugo kapag ito ay merong risk of developing into stones o di kaya arthritis. And stone formation and arthritis formation doesn't just occur with hyperuricemia alone. May mga tao na mataas yung kanilang uric acid but never sila nagkaroon ng stone formation, kidney stone formation, and at the same time, wala rin silang arthritis. It's because hyperuricemia usually becomes damaging kapag meron itong kasabay na inflammation o pamamaga sa katawan. And this uric acid supposedly na ilalabas nito ng ating ihi. By its name, uric acid, it's acidic. So, for it to be excreted, kailangan meron itong tawag natin diyang alkalinizer, yung parang basic base para ma-neutralize yung uric acid and so it can be easily excreted. Mailalabas natin sila sa ating ihi. 
the major alkalinizer ng ating katawan is actually potassium. That's why kapag sobrang baba yung potassium sa katawan, hindi na rin nakakaya ng ating kidneys to excrete the uric acid. So yung tendency, nag-accumulate ito sa ating katawan. And most other people nga, yung nga nag tumataas yung uric acid, sobrang natatakot na sila. And yes, it can be really scary because hindi lang po uric acid yung inyong dapat isipin dito. You shouldn't just worry about uric acid. But also the implication of low in potassium. Ayokong takutin kayo. But there are mga hearsay or mga sinasabi ng kakilala, ng kakilala, ng kakilala, na nag-low carb down, nag-keto, nang sila-sila lang, very young, 20s, biglang nagkaroon ng heart attack. And when they brought him to the ER, nakita nila na yung potassium ay sobrang baba na talaga. Because these low in potassium o tawag nating hypokalemia, it can be chronic. Pwede itong dahan-dahan and our body tries to compensate na hindi mo manonotice na mababa na pala yung inyong potassium. So, this signs and symptoms would lead into easy fatigue, madaling mapagod. From time to time, nagka-cramps. Minsan, hindi rin makatulog. At even pag, pag kakaroon ng constipation o yung hindi masyadong gumagalaw yung chan, hindi lang yung basta hindi nakakapagbawas. Even lack of flatulence, walang hindi umuutot. And then kung i-try nyong pakinggan yung inyong chan, hindi rin ito gumagalaw. So there's no gurgling sound. So that actually is yung tawag natin gastroparesis. Halos nagpaparalyze yung ating stomach and ating gastrointestinal tract because of too low in potassium. So that's why it is very important to really improve it. Now, merong magsasabi na nakakatakot din yung sobrang taas ng potassium. Of course, anything too much is really not good. By RDA, required daily allowance, kahit hindi siya perfect science, but at least if we have a gauge kung ano yung safe intake, nasa 3,000 to 3,500 milligrams yung potassium na kailangan natin in a day. So how can you increase your potassium intake without eating banana? Because I know in low-carb, pinaka-concern dyan, sana ko kukuha ng aking potassium kasi nga wala ng banana o kakain ba ako ng isang saging for, for, for potassium alone? Actually, hindi. Marami rin low-carb foods that are rich in potassium na hindi kailangan magaling sa banana. So, now I will share with you three tips on how you can make sure na adequate yung inyong potassium intake. So, number one would be to increase the intake of foods that are naturally rich in potassium. So ano-ano yung mga pagkain nito? Nilagay ko lang dito yung mga low-carb. I did not include the high-carb ones like kamote o di kaya yung mga certain beans kasi mataas sila sa potassium but they are too much high also in starch and overall glucose load kaya hindi na natin include. So the low-carb foods that are also high in potassium would be the green leafy vegetables like one cup of green leafy vegetables is nasa 500 milligrams yan. That's why yung sa aming medical mission when we advise for their minimum food intake na sobrang mura. So seven cups or seven serving bowls of, of vegetables o yung gulay, yung uh, mga soup na maraming talbos ng mga kamote, talbos ng kung ano-ano, all of those local greens are actually very high in potassium. Tomato, kamatis, mataas din po yan. Fish, kung salmon, yun yun sa labas eh. But sa atin, tuna, uh, bangus, kahit yung mga um, galunggong, mataas din yun sa potassium. So, you just need to eat various kinds of meat and food as well. Nuts and seeds are also high in potassium, but as usual, we just limit our nuts and seeds intake for not beyond two to three times a week only because these nuts and seeds, hindi talaga sila ganun ka natural for us to be eating often including their byproduct like the almond flour and their almond milk o kung ano-ano pang mga 
byproducts of nuts and seeds. Avocado is also very high in potassium. In fact, mas mataas pa siya kasi sa banana and berries. And I know hindi season ng avocado ngayon, but always look at the things where you can do something about. Kung walang avocado, maraming gulay yan. Yung gulay sa Pilipinas, it's all year round. And of course, for those living in other countries, you have more sources. So marami pa namang other mga sources of potassium that you can find, but these ones are the more common ones na pwede nating makita sa ating mga market, sa ating backyard, kung nagtatanim tayo, o di kaya sa mga nearby groceries. So, number two, kung hindi man kayo makakuha ng mga foods that are not naturally high in potassium, you can fortify your food a little. So, meron ako dito ang dalawa. This is what I usually use. Although, hindi rin ako araw-araw gumagamit nito because of that third tip. So, but for now, I want you to see this. So, cream of tartar. So, available lang to in any supermarket. Nasa spice section siya. Nasa sa mga spices, condiments, nandun siya. So, cream of tartar. Per teaspoon of cream of tartar, magbibigay na siya ng mga around 500 milligrams then of potassium. So if you have other sources naman, hindi rin kailangan na puro cream of tartar, like 7 teaspoons yung kakainin mo in a day, no? So at least you can just add it to your food. And actually, if you know how to lock in your potassium in your body, hindi mo rin ito kailangan that much. O hindi mo kailangan ma-reach talaga yung 3,500 on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you are not very, very active. So aside from cream of tartar, meron ding salt substitute. So meron salt substitute na made of potassium chloride. So those are potassium chloride per 160 teaspoon ito ay merong ano yan. 160 teaspoon is nasa 530 milligrams. So nakikita niyo yan. So, yeah, that's 530 milligram. This is available in many health stores. So, hindi ko rin to ginagamit that much. Tagal na nga to eh. Hindi ko pa rin uubos. So, I just added, especially sa mga pagkaing, alam kong hindi siya masyadong malalasahan. And for cream of tartar naman, I love using this. Kami ni Maming, ginagawa namin to, nilalagay namin sa scrambled eggs. So, yung scrambled eggs, mas nagiging fluffy at nagiging maasim. So, ito yung effect ng cream of tartar. So, this one you can add to just increase your potassium in the body. Just remember though na this uh, uh, these tips are not for those with CKD or chronic kidney diseases because when you already have problems with your kidney, especially yung stage 2, 3, 4, hindi nyo na alam, especially stage 5, na hindi compliant sa inyong dialysis sessions. So, kapag kasi sira na yung kidney natin, meron na tayong damage when it comes to retaining and excreting. So, pwedeng magkaroon ng accumulation of potassium. With CKD, nagkakaroon ito ng problems because it is leading to hyperkalemia. And hyperkalemia, sobra-sobrang potassium sa katawan, that is deadly. Nakakamatay po yan. In fact, yung lethal injection is made up of potassium. It's a potassium injection. And also, when I say this, I'm not saying na matatakot na kayo. So it's on the extremes. Sobrang layo pa yan. There is much more complication if you chronically, for the longest time, very low yung consumption ninyo. And if it's too high naman, <clears throat> Excuse me. And if it's too high naman, kailangan din make sure na hindi rin kayo susoba. Because if it's too high nga, nakakamatay. But malayo pa yan. So you don't need to overthink that much. Anyway, the 3,500 milligrams is just a safer bet. So that example with that would be 7 cups of vegetables or kung mimix nyo like 1 teaspoon of this, so kailangan nyo 6 teaspoons, six cups of vegetables na lang. So say, for example, kakain kayo ng vegetables three times a day. So 1,500 na lang yung kailangan ninyo. So maybe you can still have some nuts, o di kaya kakain din kayo ng isda, o di kaya merong kamatis. So actually, madali lang siyang nakokomply. And the most important part when it comes to potassium is you make sure na hindi siya mawawala. And 
how will you secure it? How will you lock it in sa cells ninyo? It's actually the intake of salt. So, adequate salt intake, regular salt, sodium chloride, that would include your table salt or Himalayan salt, pink salt, kahit iodized salt, although iodized salt is already a processed salt, but generally, any salt, any sodium chloride will actually ensure na hindi ka magkakaroon ng salt wasting. Anong ibig sabihin nito? When you do low carb kasi, as what we've mentioned, bumabagsak yung ating insulin, our body's capacity to retain water and salt is also less. At kapag bumabagsak na, umiihi ka na ng umiihi ng salt sa katawan, magkakaroon ng imbalance ng sodium sa extracellular space sa labas ng cells as compared to the amount of potassium na nasa loob ng cells. So yung gagawin ng katawan natin dyan, una, magkakaroon niya ng compensatory mechanism tulad ng pagtaas ng blood pressure kapag sobrang baba yung potassium. Pwede rin tumaas yung blood pressure kapag mababa rin yung salt because that is the initial compensatory response ng ating puso. Akala niya wala ka ng blood volume so magkocontract siya at magkakaroon ng stiffening of blood vessels so magkakaroon ng tightening ng pressure, magkakaroon ng spike in blood pressure. I know mahirap paniwalaan because for the longest time, yung akala natin, yung asin nakakapagpataas lang ng BP. But there is more damage when it comes to eating very less salt as compared to eating a little more salt than normal. But of course, ayaw nating sobra-sobra. The point is, salt is actually essential. What we failed to realize is that salt or sodium chloride, nagiging masama lang siya kapag kinakain natin ito together with carbs. So salty and sweet or salty and kanin, salty and may soft drinks, kumakain ng chips at saka merong ice cream. So all of these combination is the one that's causing problem because insulin from carbs, from sugar, tataas yan at siya yung magdidictate sa ating kidneys to retain salt and to retain water. At kapag sobra-sobra nga, tumataas yung ating blood pressure because of increased blood volume. So, when you do low carb, bumabagsak yung insulin mo, yung body's capacity to also retain water and salt, bumabagsak din. So, that's why initially, bumababa talaga yung blood pressure. And it's good also because majority of blood pressure increase yung hypertension is also relating to inflammation. And when you do low carb the right way, you will also lower down your inflammation. So at least the cause of hypertension, yung pagtaas ng blood pressure, because of inflammation, nawawala na. However, hindi lang yan yung only factor in blood pressure spike. Pwedeng pwede na compensatory mechanism ng katawan because of high high demand for salt, kaya lang mababa na yung salt niyo at yung mababa rin yung potassium niyo, nagkakaroon ng overcompensation ng puso. So when you have spikes in your blood pressure, if you think you are doing low carb na real low carb but bumabag, tumataas yung inyong blood pressure, you have to consider baka kasi hindi enough yung intake niyo of electrolytes. So that is why ensuring enough salt intake will also ensure na hindi kayo kukulangin sa potassium. Our body knows how to retain. Alam niya kung paano magtipid. Alam niya kung ano yung kinukulang at kung ano yung sumusobra. Kung sumusobra ito when it comes to that electrolyte, say for example, when it comes to that salt, madali lang niya ito excrete. However, if it is already very low, ang hirap-hirap pong hagilapin kung saan kukuha yung katawan natin yan. We have to really supplement it. So that is why when you do low carb, as compared to previous food intake, mas kakailanganin actually to increase salt intake. To make sure na hindi lang basta adequate yung inyong sodium sa katawan, but this can also help in increasing also your potassium in your body. Making sure na hindi kayo magkakaroon ng potassium wasting. So those are the most important things when it comes to the common concerns of elevated blood pressure and uric acid that are linked to low potassium when it comes to low-carb way of eating. If nakaka-confuse sa inyo yung mga ideas na ito,
try to learn more. I think I've discussed it in many other videos. But of course, if you wish to be guided, para you do it right the first time because ayaw natin ilagay sa piligro yung ating pangangatawan, yung ating health. We only have one life. We have to take care of it. Learn it the right way. Do your own research. Read as many books as you can. Watch as many low-carb doctors as you can. Or you can also join the ones in our masterclass by yours truly. Message lang po. We have a Facebook page for that. LCF Masterclass by Josephine Grace C. Rojo. And to start for your food inspirations join life without rice or low carb feasting and fasting community so to recap three things to avoid para hindi bumagsak masyado yung potassium natin and hindi rin mag shoot up yung ating blood pressure and uric acid is to increase our intake of foods naturally rich in potassium that are low carb compliant still you can also fortify your food with potassium condiments na pang pasarap ng pagkain. So this is cream of tartar and this is salt substitute. So this is potassium. Or you can also take some potassium tablets but those are just 99 milligrams. So mababa lang yung mga potassium tablets na yan, yung mga supplemental dose. And that's why as much as possible, you still make it as part of your meal. Hindi tayo basta-basta lang mag sa mga tabletas. And lastly, the most important part of making sure that your potassium is enough is by first making sure that your salt intake is enough. And as a reminder, this is not okay for those with CKD. For those with chronic kidney diseases, kailangan under supervision kayo ng inyong doctor. But there is no contraindication to start low-carb the right way. We have a JGC Raho food list for your guide. And if you wish to know more, just message our admins for you to be guided. For those in YouTube, you can contact 0917-993-1239. Look for Angela or Alvin for our masterclass details. Nasa Facebook pa lang tayo ngayon, but soon we will open it up in our website. So maraming salamat everybody. Thank you very much. Have a good day. I hope you get to ensure that you have enough adequate electrolyte intake. Maraming salamat po. Always remember to stay low carb so that we all stay safe.